what the investment opportunities are with uh within data centers so number one power power is going to be important obviously this doesn't work right we, we don't have the power none of this can work number two is security i'm going to show you a clip on that because that has many layers to it right the third one is infrastructure we talked about that uh storage i'm going to show you some companies um because when we're talking about obviously from a standpoint of building it uh, and taking part inside of the infrastructure of creating inside of it, we also need to be integral in the investment piece of it. And that's what we're gonna do. All right, so let's start with power. All right, so this is it right here, man. I'm not making this up. Uh, this is McKinsey and Company. This is a, a, a well, well-renowned uh, journalist, a journalistic integrity uh, company that has reported this, right? So this is the man of power for data centers and the expected rise uh, they're expected to rise significantly in the United States. This is over the next uh, six years, all right? So we can see in 2023, and this is measured in terawatt hours of electricity demand. And so you can see the consumption, which was at 178 uh, terawatts per hour here in 2024. Well, look what that's at in 2030, right? You're talking almost, you're talking 3X, 3X. And so, Somebody has to produce power for these places, right? Somebody has to build build them, number one. Somebody has to produce power. But all those other details that we just spoke about, that leads to opportunity inside investment and innovation. And so, again, when you're talking about bubbles, make sure that you're very clear on what a bubble is and what a bubble isn't, right? If we're talking about sustainable growth, now, obviously, we have to pick some of the, the companies that are leading this. Always choose a top two or three inside of a company, uh, inside of a sector. But you can see that there's a demand, and that demand is only getting greater. It's only getting greater. Now, for all my green people, yes, there is pollution that comes from this level of energy use. And so that might be another opportunity. Who can create efficient energy to run some of these data centers? Again, another way to think about it. All right, here goes a company, all right? Put this in your notes, write this down, put this on your board. Put this on your watch list. Diacom Industries. I'm gonna give you like 10 seconds. If you got your stock app, right? If you're on your phone or your iPad, type in DY and go look at that chart. Right? Go year to date, take it from a year, take it from two years, five years. Look at this chart on right. Look at from 2020. Let's look at the last five years as the rise of AI, right? And we're talking about power here. Look at its chart since 2020, right? In 2020, it was trading at 44, $28. 2868 on April 20th, 2020. Today, it is trading at $195.67, right? That's incredible, right? That's a $145 increase. That's pretty incredible. But people are gonna say in 2020, we wasn't thinking about this. All right, well, how about if we take year to date? Year to date, Right in January, it was trading at $114 on January 18th. Today, it's trading at 197. That's the $83 percent, $83 in increase over the past nine months. Why? Well, let's look into it. Right. So, the engineering service company has a slew of positive catalysts in the pipeline. DICOM is a beneficiary of the government. Remember that, 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 in that company, that, that behemoth that organization called the federal government that Sam Altman was talking about? Well, they are a beneficiary of the government's broadband equity access and deployment program, which provides 42.5 billion, 42.5 billion in federal funding to expand access to high speed internet. What do data centers need? High speed internet. So analysts expect this initiative to be a significant revenue driver for DICOM in addition, the firm said uh, DICOM's data center opportunity is extremely undervalued, right? Because people just hear data centers, they don't know what they are. These are the things that make the data centers run. If we're talking about that, and he's talking about it to the government, and obviously NVIDIA is major because the more data centers are built, the more places they can put their GPUs. If we see that number increase, we see revenue increase, we're talking about 143%, 200%. If that number keeps increasing, that means that they need to build more of these centers to now house the infrastructure. And so in order to have high speed internet, well, we're seeing a beneficiary of a government program saying, hey, we need to keep the lead. 
We have to keep the lead. We're building these centers. We need y'all to help, all right? And so Dicom shares are up more than 60% this year, right? I would put that on my watch list. Watch this carefully. If I make a move on it, you'll definitely know. But I just want to let you know about this company, all right? That's a sleeper. I haven't heard one person talk about it. So if you hear somebody talk about it, remember where they heard it. <laughs> all right, let's keep rolling. Let's talk about security. And in order to talk about security, uh, I'm going to go back to the interview because Oprah brought up somebody very important, the head of the FBI. So check this out. Breaking. Do you think we have the laws or regulations in place now to keep Americans safe from all that's coming, all the AI threats? I would probably leave legislating to the legislators, yeah. but what I will tell you from an FBI director's perspective um, is that this is a type of technology that we see manifesting itself in more and more situations, more and more types of crimes, more and more types of threats. Uh, and there's a degree to which overall our laws haven't kept pace with the technology. Does that frustrate you? Sure. Yeah. Sure. What I worry about is the day which is coming. It's not here yet, but it's coming faster than we would like, where those um, elite bad guys will find AI sophisticated enough to take their game to a whole nother level. And the elite bad guys are doing what? So the elite bad guys are the ones, you know, for example, conducting the most sophisticated cyber intrusions. Mm -hmm. To me, no country, no country represents a broader, more severe, more comprehensive threat to American innovation, American ideas, to our economic security, and ultimately our national security than the Chinese government. China has a bigger hacking program already than that of every major nation combined and has stolen more of Americans' personal and corporate data than every nation, big or small, combined. The scale of the threat is significant. If you took the FBI's program and just said, forget Russia, forget Iran, just do nothing but China, the Chinese government's hacking program, they would outnumber us 50 to 1. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah about that um this is not a game yeah it's not a game and i get it i get why we need to stay ahead hopefully that shed a little bit of light for you if not a whole lot of light for you on why we need to stay ahead but even more so what i heard was how do we stay protected how do we protect ourselves how do we make sure we have the correct companies in place to combat that? Because they're right, right? You're talking about a, a country of nearly 2 billion people, if not over 2 billion people. Um, and the threat is serious. And so when we talk about the top three cybersecurity companies, I know people are going to kill me. They're like, Troy, why do you have CrowdStrike number one? And the reason is very simple. Because they are number one. <laughs> um the, 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 the business hasn't changed. Have they had a catastrophic event happen? Yes. The, the, the breach that happened with the airlines and with Microsoft, terrible, terrible. And anybody that was a victim of it and anybody that was traveling at that time, you know exactly what that felt like. Here's the reality of it. There's an opportunity. Um, and so... I will be, and I'm saying this now, I will be putting a new CrowdStrike price uh, in EYLU over the next couple of weeks, just because if you've watched their chart over the past month, you've seen it climb back. Now, we don't want to get it uh, when it's too late. And this is a company, obviously, when you just heard what the FBI director was talking about, this is a company that's going to be paramount um, in the protector, not only of, of data, but personal information as well, um, because we can see uh, the power of AI with a little bit of information, a little bit of personal information could be deadly. Um, and so they're at the forefront of that. Uh, Fortnit, I, I put as well. Power Alto, I put. I could have added Zscaler. I just, and I've, I've, I've sat down with, with execs from Power Alto. Uh, yeah, we, we'll talk about that another time. But these are the leaders inside the space. 